Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about least squares function approximation. Recall from previous lectures that we discussed orthogonal functions. Okay, so an orthogonal functions are some set. Okay, and it could be uh, uh, infinite or it could be finite. And it's a set of functions like this. And there could be, let's say, n of them, like that. OK, and we have an inner product OK, and the inner product is uh, fi, or sorry, phi i and phi j are integrating. We integrate over a to b of phi i of x times phi uh, j of x dx, OK? And we have a uh, orthogonality is defined as uh, where phi i and phi j are equal to zero when i is not, or sorry, i is not equal to j, like that. Okay, so that means s is orthogonal. Okay, um, so when we have a set like this, then what we're going to be given now is we're given a set like, uh, a given a function. We uh, want to approximate. Okay, and that function will be f of x. Okay, so again, it's given some function. And we want to approximate f with, with s, i.e., we want to find a situation like this, where f of x is as close as possible to a set ci, i going from 1 all the way to n of phi i of x. That is, we want to find some best approximation, uh, c1 phi1 plus c2 phi2 plus dot 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 all the way to cn phi n. Okay, and so the idea here is, of course, um, we can actually define this to be what we call f hat of x, right? And that right there is going to be that approximation of f. Okay, um, so that approximate function f hat, so the task at hand is to find uh, or, or choose the ci coefficients uh, to uh, best uh, fit uh, f of x. Okay, so the question then is, of course, how or what in what sense? And the answer is pretty clear. We're gonna we're gonna choose uh, choose the ci so that the magnitude f minus f hat is minimum. Okay, but because we don't really care about whether we're looking at the true magnitude, we can actually look at the squared magnitude, right? And that squared man magnitude means that this right here is what we call the least squares. Okay. So let's just unpack what we mean here. That magnitude f minus f hat squared is equal to uh, the integral of integrating over a to b of f of x minus 
again, f hat, which again is that sum ci phi i of x, all quantities squared, dx, okay? Um, and we're going from i equals 1 to n, all right? So that's the objective here is to minimize that thing, okay? So uh, let's now move to the next page, and I'll rewrite our goal. Choose ci such that uh, f minus f hat, which is equal to the integral of a to b uh, of the difference between f and its approximation formed by that linear combination of orthogonal functions is minimum. And this is what we call the least squares problem. Okay, so what's the trick? Well, it's going to be a... Uh, so what's the trick? The trick is going to be... The trick is going to be... Uh, we're going to use calculus. Again, we're going to take derivatives. with respect to the ci variables and then set to zero uh, and we've seen that trick before the other thing that's going to help us though other trick the other thing the nice property the the nice situation we're in the nice situation we're in is that the phi i are orthogonal And that's going to make it a lot easier. This makes it, it makes it easy. And the goal here, or, or maybe the result, is find a simple formula to determine Uh, the ci always it, again it works for any f of x that's given okay so it turns out this is actually a, a fairly straight thing to do uh, we have to understand though one thing that sorry I forgot to put my squared up there my bad I hope you guys can put that back in your notes one other trick we're going to exploit, though, is that, of course, the, the, the squared difference in magnitude between f and f hat is equal to the inner product of f minus f hat, comma, f minus f hat, okay? Uh, and that's going to, uh, we're going to use that quite often. And we've got to remember also that the inner product is, this is linear. All right, so it passes through sums. Okay, and what I mean by that is that if I have a, a um, an h function and then I have, I have a g function. Uh, 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 plus a k function there, right? This is equal to the inner product of h and g plus uh, h and k, okay? And that 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 works in either case uh, on either. And because we have symmetric the a symmetric property of inner products. It's linear in both positions, either before the, equal, or the comma or after the comma, right? And that allows us to uh, this allows us to break down uh, the problem into pieces. I'll put exclamation points on there. That's 
that's going to be our one trick that we're going to use to really, really work this out nicely. So let's actually just do this. Uh, let's see what's going on here. And so this works a lot like foiling. Um, so we're gonna, it's sort of like a foil. I'll put that in quotes. First outside, inside, last. But we end up with an F comma F, right? And then we end up with a minus two, and this is that cross term, F comma F hat. And then we're also, we also end up with a plus F hat comma F hat. All right, so that is our, uh, we've broken down the problem using linearity. Now what we have to do is sub n for F hat that sum C I B I. Okay, and we're gonna do that on the next page. So let's do it. So let's just write down again what we had from before. We had that magnitude F minus F hat and that was equal to F comma F uh, minus two F comma F hat uh, plus um, F hat comma F hat. All right, and now we're going to uh, remember that uh, F hat, that's the thing we want to determine what it is exactly, but we know is of a specific form that it's gonna be a weighted sum or a linear combination of our of our uh, our orthogonal functions, and also note, again, this is going to make it very easy for us to do this job. That if I see a phi i comma phi j, it's going to equal zero when i is not equal to j. Okay, and that's going to help us a great deal in simplifying this problem. All right, so that is a big parenthetical here. So now I'm going to take the, oh, so this is again, this is the squared magnitude. Sorry guys, I keep forgetting that. All right, so we're going to do this. And note here that F comma F, the inner product of F with itself is just going to be the magnitude of F, okay? Uh, and then we're going to have those two other terms. So we want to break those down. So let's, let's first examine this one. We're going to examine uh, the f hat comma f hat term. That's going to be uh, the sum over c i of phi i. Okay, and i is going to go to from one all the way to n. Uh, but when we do this summation, we need to use different letters. So I'm going to use j here. J equals one to n. Okay, of c j. Bj, and that just allows me to keep track of what thing is is what, uh, and that's a maybe a tricky point, something that maybe I think uh, students might naively put i in every spot, uh, and that just allows me to distinguish uh, 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 the left and right hand sums there, uh, and and we'll see how that works. So let's recall what what these are, right? This is going to be c1 phi 1 plus c2 phi 2 dot 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 all the way to cn phi n and now we're going to have a c1 phi 1 plus c oops the same thing goes in the other position phi 2 all the way to cn phi n okay all right so just like before we have to multiply through all these terms and you end up with this c1 squared because the linearity means that the constants can come out phi 1 comma phi 1 uh, plus c squared of c2 phi 2 comma phi 2 all the way to c n squared phi n comma phi n plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 and what we're, what I'm, why I'm putting all those zeros there is that the all cross terms all t cross terms phi i and phi j are going to be zero. 
uh, by orthogonality. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that what we have here is the sum of, oops, of C i squared times the squared magnitude of the of the uh, well let, let's actually let's back up here I'm just going to I'm just gonna leave that there this is just gonna be phi i comma phi i I'll leave I'll just leave that notation there and, and we're gonna sum over one all the way to n so that's a great simplification of this first term okay so now let's go on to the next term the next term is also going to be really uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's look at that term. Now we're going to look at that f comma f hat, and now we're going to replace it with f comma the sum ci phi, and note that that is f comma c1 phi1 plus c2 phi2 plus all the way to cn phi n. Okay, I think you can see a pattern here. Again, we're going to distribute f into each one of those cases, and we're going to end up with the c1 can come out. We're going to have f comma phi 1 plus c2 f comma phi 2 plus dot 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 all the way to cn f comma phi n. Okay, we can express this then as the sum i equals 1 all the way to n of the c i times f comma c uh, i inner product. Okay, so now we've got all of our terms. Let's now put this together. So what we have here is that squared magnitude can now be written as the squared magnitude of f uh, minus 2, and we had there first f comma f hat, right, uh, plus f hat comma f hat inner product, okay, and now we can write this as the magnitude of f squared minus 2, uh, the sum ci inner product of f comma phi i, and that sum is going to go from 1 all the way to n. And then finally, we're going to have here the sum i equals 1 to n of ci squared phi i comma phi i. All right. So I'm going to give this another name. Let's look at this. What is that? I call that, I'm going to call this a name. I call it really the squared error. It's basically how good is the approximation. Okay, so I'm going to give that a new name now. I'm actually going to give it a name. I'm going to call it E, E for error. And it is a function of C1 comma C2 all the way to Cn. Okay, that'll be my squared error function. All right. So we're now going to use the calculus trick and basically find that critical value uh, for the CI is when the partial derivative of the error function with respect to all the variables is equal to zero. So what we got to do now is simply compute the partial derivative of the error function with respect to any of the variables. So I'll pick a specific variable. In fact, maybe it's, it's worthwhile to go back and just, I'll, I'm going to take out those k's and instead use a, uh, sorry, an i, and I'm going to put in a k there where k is a particular index. 
Okay, so let's do it. Uh, the derivative of the squared magnitude, that's going to be 0, minus 2. And now we're going to go in here, and all we're going to get is when I take the derivative of, sorry, the derivative is going to pass through the sum. It'll pass And that's a CI there, CI like that, okay? Uh, notice this whole thing is zero, is non-zero only uh, for CK, the particular coefficient. All the other coefficients will go away. And then also plus, we're gonna have that sum there, CK, we have a ci squared, and then we have that phi comma phi there, okay? And that, of course, is also going to be 2ck or 0 elsewhere, else, okay? So we can put that all together, that we have the partial derivative of the error with respect to a particular coefficient, okay? It could be any one of them. We're going to do it for all. We're going to set it equal to 0. What we're going to get is 0, that was that first term, minus 2 times, remember this right here is a constant. Remember those inner products, they're just numbers, right? That, that's a constant. And that is a constant too, that inner product there. Those are all just constants, right? But now only sp specific constants show up. We're only going to get f comma phi k as the inner product because all the other ones go to zero plus and now we have 2ck uh, that's the derivative of ck squared times phi k comma phi k inner product all right and again that's set equal to zero and so of course now we're going to solve for that ck critical value and looking at that equal to zero it's pretty clear that ck all we have to do is move this term over to the other side and we're going to get the twos cancel and then divide by the inner product phi k comma phi k and that right there is our constructive formula for all the phi k's. And that's very exciting. Um, and I'll put exclamation points. And this is, in fact, very easy. And it does not depend on any other values of, uh, of, of CI, right? I can do this, this is a sequential calculation. I can do it for each one independently. This way it can become an algorithm. All right, so let's just wrap up and figure out what we do, basically, what, what we're doing here. So, okay, so basically the solution to the least squares problem is going to be the following. So we're going to minimize that squared error with f hat being defined as the sum of ci phi okay is is done uh, uh, by setting the ci equal to f comma phi i all over phi i comma phi i inner product, okay? Uh, so f hat, the best approximation, yeah. 
is equal to the sum i going from 1 all the way to n and our coefficients now can be computed independently of one another is that. So right there is the, the best approximation in the sense of the least squares problem. Okay. Again, this works uh, for any f of x given, provided you can do integrals and things like that. Any set of orthogonal functions phi1, phi2, all the way to phin of any size. Okay. And, and so this is a, a very powerful tool uh, for uh, function representation. Okay, so in the next videos, we'll actually go and start looking at some examples with particular sets of orthogonal functions, particular f values, just to show you how it works. So thank you very much.